Welcome, friends, to The Week in Truth, number 26. This, I hope, really, really, really is going to be the last one about Zippy Twatwit. Because I forgot in my last video to say why I believe that Sean is an intelligence agency asset. Now, I'm not saying that Sean would be somebody like James Bond, for example, because he'd have to be very much more good looking than what he is. But I think there's every likelihood that somebody like Sean would really appeal to the intelligence agencies. Because for a start, they think he's clever. I don't particularly agree with this, as you may know. But he gives that appearance. And he certainly is sneaky and they love that sociopathic kind of profile they love sneaky criminal people because they are likely to be able to get that intelligence to them they don't have principles morals or any of that kind of annoying stuff that gets in the way of people pretending to be a moral crusader when really they are somebody that is um, being a Pied Piper to the general public and pushing people in a certain direction. Basically, what the truth movement is, as you're going to find out if you follow my channel, is the aim of it is to push people in a certain political direction, which at this point in time would seem to be towards the right wing. And for activists basically to be rendered ineffectual by continually following people like Sean Atwood who turn out to be fakes and frauds. They all have this con man persona which is a cover story really because people then start saying oh he's just a grifter, she's just a grifter or whoever it is. They're a con man, they had uh, GoFundMe, they ripped off the public, oh they're just a con man. No they're not. Really, they don't need to get any GoFundMes or donations from anybody because they're paid by GCHQ. Now, the reason that I think Sean might, uh, might have succumbed to that, for a start, he sneaked all his information out for his, um, uh, what was his channel called? Jail John Journal or something like that. John's Jail Journal. <laughs> I can't bloody remember what it's called. It's so bloody irrelevant to me. I don't follow true crime things. But he sneaked out all this writing that he did and he had this online blog or whatever it was that is. I think his sister helped him to do it. So um, that became quite famous. So not only was he managing to sneak writing out of a, quite a high security jail, but... Um, he got it online and he basically, I think he already had books published by the time that he came out of jail. But could it have been the case that MI5, MI6 or whatever got in touch with America and said, is there any chance we could get his sentence reduced? We'll get him out of there because that poor weedy English boy isn't going to fare well forever in those circumstances. And he'd be rather useful to us as a sort of change agent and a fake activist in the UK. Now, if we look at this article, this is about the whole business of when he got sent to jail and it tells me what his sentence was at the time. What's an interesting point to notice is that in the previous article that I just read you, because I've made this video on the back of number 25, and at the time of his trial, his girlfriend was 19-year-old Amber Hallwagner. This article gives his girlfriend at the time as Claudia, for whom Atwood had decided to give up drug dealing. As he says here, the love of the relationship made me see the error of my ways. Atwood told Business Insider. The reformed drug dealer had even enrolled in a course to learn Spanish, but Atwood's transformation came too late. 
On May the 16th, 2002, he was arrested and charged with conspiracy related to numerous drug offences. Atwood spent two years locked up at the notorious Maricopa County Jail, which he says had the highest death rate in America at the time, before being moved to serve the rest of his nine-year sentence at the Arizona Department of Corrections. So, basically... As far as I know, he didn't serve nine years. Did he get let off the rest in exchange for becoming an intelligence agency asset? I think that's quite probable. Although some of you are going to say, you're being paranoid again, Queenie. But you see, you guys need a history lesson let me see if I can find what I am looking for. I'm forever losing things, of course. Ah, here it is. Yes, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a history lesson. When we look at the Soviet Union, I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to say, oh, but that's the Soviet Union. Things are different here. This is the UK. We are a democracy. What you don't realise is that there's no difference between capitalism and communism. It's all control of the people. That is all government is. And the intelligence agencies control the people too, either with propaganda of the type which the truth movement most definitely is, or in fact setting up fake political activist groups. So if we look back at the Soviet Union, this article is from World History on how stuff works. And it talks about an organization that was set up called the Monarchist Union of Central Russia. So the article says early in the USSR's existence, the former Soviet Union, the ex-Tsarist socialists and European anti-communists who wanted the regime to fail joined forces in an umbrella organization called the Monarchist Union of Central Russia. What they didn't realize until too late was that the union was a ruse, a honeypot set up by the Soviets themselves. They created their own enemy, their own resistance movement, Cypher says, so that they knew everybody. Eventually they killed them all. So you see, the truth movement brings us all out into the open. All of those people who are the resistance to the government and the cabal that really runs things. Uh, This is another page that talks about it. I believe this one's from Wikipedia. And it's on the subject of active measures. And it talks about, once again, the former Soviet Union and what is called here puppet rebel forces. And this talks about, once again, the monarchist union of central Russia being a fake anti-Bolshevik underground organization. So you see, this is a template of what intelligence agencies do. They run political activist movements. In modern terms, we call this controlled opposition. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard that term. And that's really what I would say, Sean, and a vast number of other people in the truth movement are, including your Sonia Poultons and your David Ikes. David Ikes really very useful because he already had a large following of people that knew him from daytime TV. He'd already, to some extent, involved himself in politics in the Green Party. He was ideal for MI5 to take an interest in, I'm sure. These people are paid very well. They always, always do this begging bowl routine and they are eventually found to be ripping people off. So they've got a perfect cover story for what they do. Nobody ever seems to say, oh, I wonder if they're working for MI5. It all seems to say, oh, no, he's just a grifter. He's just a con man. 
And that, my friends, is the cover story. Bye for now, folks. Subscribe if you want to. As I always say, I don't give a shit. My channel's not monetized. I don't earn any money from this. I don't care if you like me. I don't want to be your friend. Tatty bye.